Welcome to Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm John Lorden, and I'm back. Thank you, everyone that was concerned about me over the past week and a half or so. Uh, unfortunately, I had a little sports injury that occurred right before my trip to VidCon, but thankfully I was able to treat it and get into a spot that was uh, okay enough for me to travel. So I did make it to VidCon. We will talk all about that on Monday. As you guys, as many of you longtime subscribers know, VidCon is usually uh, a big point of inspiration for me. There will be some channel changes happening. So be sure to check out Johnny Vlogs on Monday so you can get your voice in on some of the stuff that I'm thinking about doing with the channel. Today we are looking into the case of Jake Wilson. Um, this is a case that actually came up in the last episode of Brain Scratch that we did. How are they connected? Well, we'll get to that, but first let's go into the basics of this case. Jake Wilson, age 16, was last seen around 8.45 p.m. on April 7th, 2018, when he left his home in LaPorte City, Iowa to go to Wolf Creek, only about two blocks away. Jake is autistic with a mild intellectual disorder. He thinks more like a nine-year-old and will go up to anybody and go with anybody. Uh, I think that that's actually a good trait that uh, he is open to be, you know, open with people and to speak to them. Uh, however, going with other people, uh, especially at that age and with what he's facing, um, might be a bit of a factor in this case. So let's just keep that in mind as, as we roll forward. He's about five foot six inches tall, weighs approximately 135 pounds, has hazel eyes and blonde hair. He was wearing a dark brown zip up jacket, dark sweatpants and cowboy boots. Jake left without his glasses. And as you can see here, all these pictures have him in his glasses, but thankfully uh, media kind of caught on to that. And some of the articles that we're going through, you're going to see pictures of him without his glasses also. Uh, persons who live within a five mile radius of LaPorte City are asked to search their outbuildings, vehicles, and any other place he could be trying to keep warm. Uh, and of course they have contact information, which I will have in the description box below as well. So how is this connected to Brain Scratch from a few weeks ago? Well, Drew Collins, that name sound familiar? Drew Collins hopes his experience can help the family of Jake Wilson, a 16-year-old autistic teen who has been missing from his LaPorte City home since Saturday. Collins is the father of Elizabeth Collins, who was abducted in Evansdale with her cousin, Lyric Cook, in July of 2012. Um, that's where I originally heard about this case. I was moved by some comments that Drew made about this case when I was researching that case, and that's why we're, we're here covering it. Uh, I'm really thankful that Drew is taking some of the lessons that he's learned from a very tough time in his life and trying to share that insight with other people. I think that is just amazing, and uh, what better way to honor uh, his daughter and her cousin than to continue to pay it forward in, in such a strong way. So uh, I'm really moved by him. Uh, here is one picture that circulated very quickly after they figured out he was out there without his glasses. I think there'll be one or two others that we bump into uh, as we go forward here as well. Over at missingkids.org, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, uh, they do have a poster together for him, missing since April 7th, 2018. His date of birth, February 11th, 2002. Once again, white male, uh, blonde hair, although it looks kind of dark in some pictures. Um, hazel eyes, five foot six, 135 pounds. And unfortunately, I could not find a NamUs profile for him. I don't know if it's in the works or not. Uh, it's something that I will certainly keep an eye out for. Uh, if any family members happen to see this video, you can register with NamUs openly and get his profile information added there. You don't have to do it through law enforcement or anything like that. Um, I highly recommend that you do that. NamUs is a database of not only missing people, but they also identify, well, they try to identify um, bodies that have been found where they don't know the identity. And part of that system is having both parts of that record. You need the missing person to be entered. So if there is a chance that Jake might wind up somewhere far away um, and not have an ID on him or something like that, NamUs can be a very good tool in terms of helping uh, to make that connection. Jumping over to WCF Courier, we see a community, um, and this is a small community, but uh, a community that really rallied support 
very quickly. Uh, hundreds turn out and search for missing Laporte teen. And here is a picture, and I know it looks really snowy here. Um, being someone that's not wholly unfamiliar with dealing with this type of weather now, uh, the first thing I noticed was take a look at the ground. The snow is actually uh, melting on the ground. There's no good layer down there. It's just water. Uh, a lot of people that are critical about some of the developments in this story are wondering why his uh, he lives with his mother and his stepfather, why they let him go out for a walk at um, you know between 8.30 to 9 p.m., uh, especially if it was this kind of weather. Now, from some comments on web sleuths that I've seen, this weather actually didn't kick in until Sunday, until the day after he was missing. But on Saturday, from what I understand, it was actually a pretty nice day, uh, not quite as cold as this. And some people are also um, worried that he might have not had appropriate wear. Here in this picture, we can see this is the actual jacket uh, that he was wearing when he went missing. And I know a lot of people are looking in that and saying, hey, that's that's just a hoodie. You know, that wouldn't be warm enough if you were out there in the snow. Uh, apparently, this is a double lined. It's just a soft coat. It's, it's a bit more than a hoodie. And considering that it wasn't snowing on that actual day, um, that was probably more than fine for the weather elements that he was uh, taking a walk in. Only a two block walk. Also, we have to keep in mind. So what do we have for a timeline in this case? Um, unfortunately, there wasn't a whole lot. Uh, you know, we've got him leaving home, going on a walk and disappearing, but there is a bit of backstory here. Um, it's like he just vanished, said his mother, Megan Nyswanger. We searched everywhere. Jake apparently left without his glasses, which his mother found at the home overnight. She said he is able to get around without his glasses, but worried about his ability to navigate in the dark without them. She said he went to Tootsie's, the town ice cream shop, Saturday evening, and when he returned, he asked if he could go to the creek about two blocks away, saying he would come right back. Quote, he just asked if he can go down to the creek, and my husband told him the directions. It's a pretty straight shot. He's taken it before, just never alone and hasn't been there since summertime, Nyswanger said. She said uh, she was actually asleep at the time. When he didn't return about a half an hour later, family members began looking for him, she said. She said her husband took a kayak out on the creek in the dark, but was unable to locate him. Now, uh, you know, some people are going to be critical about this aspect of the story. Uh, I know, especially coming off some cases that we've covered here recently, uh, I am even myself looking at some elements of this story and saying, does this really make sense? You know, it, I don't know if it's still daylight hours when we're, you know, we're talking back in April, uh, 830 at night. He's never done this walk before. Why exactly are we letting him go knowing that, you know, he's he's struggling with uh, dealing with the mentality of a nine year old? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it was the best idea. I'm sure the family is already kicking themselves all over this. But I do want to mention, because I am seeing it uh, mentioned on web sleuths in particular, that a lot of people are looking at these aspects of the case and saying, you know what, did something else go on here? This is just really strange. His mother's asleep. You know, stepdad sends him off. Um, I don't know. All I can tell you guys is what investigation has been done up to this point. Uh, and I'm hopeful that, um, I'm more than hopeful, I'm fairly confident that uh, the investigators working on this case are looking every which way and have considered uh, that angle as well. Uh, no one has spoken to it, so I don't know how strong of an angle it is. I'm not finding any information to really support that there could be something else at play here. It doesn't necessarily rule it out. I'm just telling you guys that's where the media on this case is at this point. At 9 a.m. Sunday, more than 200 volunteers from neighboring communities filled the fire station and formed groups of 15 to check fields and neighborhoods surrounding the creek. The search included firefighters, officers, and deputies from numerous departments. Crews with Task Force One, a Cedar Rapids search and rescue outfit, helped coordinate. The Iowa State Patrol had an airplane using infrared and two drones were also involved. Searchers on kayaks were on the creek. So you can hear this is just a huge effort very quickly um, being put into place. I mean, he goes missing the night before the next morning. We have hundreds of people working on this plus professional services. 
weather was a major factor in Sunday's search. The snow began to fall shortly before 1 p.m., adding a sense of urgency while blanketing the terrain, slashing visibility, and grounding aircraft and drones. So uh, once again, just kind of supporting the angle about it seems like the snow started on Sunday. Um, I don't know if it snowed at all on Saturday, but by all accounts, at least from what I'm able to see on social media, it seems like it was a nice day on Saturday. Over at the Globe Gazette, uh, we are now four days after he went missing. Volunteers returned for a fourth day as the search for a missing autistic teen continued. 250 people signed up for Wednesday's search. Just, it's amazing to me uh, how many people are giving their time to this effort. Uh, and then we also hear the number of investigators assisting with the case has grown from three to more than 28. So once again, just all hands on deck trying to find Jake. Over at the Des Moines Register, uh, investigators said they're focused on a 30 minute window of time on the evening of April 7th. Investigators are asking anyone who saw a person walking in the area of Commercial Street and Bishop Avenue between 8.30 and 9 p.m. April 7th to come forward. Now, they're not talking about Jake. They're talking about someone else that they know was walking around in this area, and they're trying to speak to them. Um, and this is LaPorte City Police Chief Chris Brecher. Uh, you never know what's going to come out of it. Not necessarily that it's a suspect, but it's a person that we have an interest in that we'd like to talk to. Now, this article actually came out uh, back on April 16th. I have to say, I don't believe I've seen any updates on this aspect of the case. I don't know if they've actually found this person or not. So uh, keep that in your mind if you're living in this area and you are keeping your eyes open on this case for me. Uh, keep that in mind that there's also another person out there that police have been looking to interview. And I don't believe that they've actually, at least they haven't publicly said in the media that I've reviewed, that they have found this person. We roll forward to April 16th, 2018. Operations are now being scaled back. Investigators are asking everyone who took pictures or video in LaPorte City last Saturday to send them to authorities. And not just the authorities, but actually the FBI made a special website for collecting this media. Uh, what happened as a result of that? Over at KCCI.com, we're going to get some details. During a Saturday morning briefing, Black Hawk County Sheriff Tony Thompson said authorities were looking for any information on a person who was spotted walking in the area, Commercial Street and Bishop Road, around 8.30 the night Wilson was last seen. Thompson said authorities were making the request for info following a tip that had come in overnight. Specifically, law enforcement was looking for a description of the person and what direction they were headed. Once again, I haven't heard any description of this person, so I don't know if they even got that much information. Thompson went on to say he was, quote, rather frustrated by the low response to the FBI webpage created to upload photos and videos from April 7th. Investigators announced the collection page Friday morning and hoped a camera used last Saturday might have caught something that would help in the search. We know that there were events going on in town. We know we had a reunion. We know we had a bike ride. Um, so obviously he's frustrated. There is no media that is coming when you know that there's people out there. They're obviously using their phones, their cameras, they're capturing media. Um, but we're talking about only a you know two block walk. Uh, we don't know if Jake actually made it to the creek. We don't know where those events were happening in relation of the creek. So I don't know about the expectation that those events could have really provided any fruitful information. But uh, it does seem like the, um, the police had some expectation there. Uh, the Wilson family released a statement. I just wanted to share part of it with you because it gives us some insight uh, into Jake. We would like to share a little bit about Jake. Jake may act like a typical teenager, but he has struggled from the difficulties of mild intellectual disorder, which he has had since birth. As he grew up, he displayed odd behaviors that were similar to that of autism. Even with these challenges, Jake perseveres through the support of family, friends, and the good people of this community. He is able to play sports and even made first place in long jump and second place in softball with the Special Olympics. Jake loves music and performing in choir. The one thing Jake loves to do and dominates at is playing his Xbox just like any other teenager. 
Uh, one of his favorite hobbies is exploring nature. He's an avid nature lover. He loves to fish and collect all kinds of treasures like antlers, empty shells, and all kinds of other things a teenage boy would collect when being outdoors. His favorite chore is feeding the chickens. He loves visiting his Uncle Chad and Aunt Mel's acreage and loves getting a turkey or chicken egg while collecting feathers from the coops. Jake loves going to the park in town and swing. Uh, he, we built a swing for him in our backyard because he loves it so much. Jake loves ice cream. Jake loves Jake. And we love him more than we can possibly describe. Uh, sounds like just a very sweet and special boy, and I am really so hopeful that someone out there has information that can help us find him and bring him home. Uh, over at communitynewspapergroup.com, May 8th, 2018, we see that a month after his disappearance, a vigil was held for Jake. The vigil Monday night began at 8 p.m. with a candle lighting at 845 near Wolf Creek. Included in the vigil was the reading of two letters to his family as part of his last school project. LaPorte City Police Chief Chris Brecher said the vigil reminded the family that much support still exists for Jake. Uh, and more than that, I'm certain that especially after we put this video out, there's, there's many other people all around the world that want to see Jake come home. Uh, over at Des Moines Register.com, we learn of, um, you know, I always look for the bright lights in this story. And essentially, the authorities were tasked with um, trying to look through this creek and all the water that they were going through. They were bumping into a lot of trees and very large branches that had fallen in there. A gaming association has donated $10,000 to reimburse an excavator who volunteered his time and machinery in the search for an autistic teenager. The Black Hawk County Gaming Association donated the money to fund the heavy equipment operations. Jason Even, owner of Veracity Excavating LLC. Even was expected to spend at least 10 hours each day for four to five days in the next week using his excavator on the creek, grabbing logs out of the water and setting them aside as searchers in dry suits look for any sign of Jake upstream and downstream. In an email to reporters, the city's police chief, Chris Brecher, uh, or Brecher, sorry, uh, described the association as very generous. And I just have to echo that. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you live in this area and you know of um, any casinos that are backed by the Black Hawk County Gaming Association, I'd ask you guys to uh, certainly go spend some money in those areas. This is just amazing that they would um, just donate this money like this to help find this, this young man. I'm, I'm really, really moved by that. Uh, Brecher said it would have cost the city a couple hundred dollars each hour to pay someone to provide and use the machinery even has volunteered to operate. Uh, searchers have combed through about 90% of the creek, which the chief described as his team's main culprit and wild card. From what I understand, I believe we're talking about a six mile stretch of area here. Using sonar, authorities previously flagged an area of the creek that had pockets as deep as 15 feet, but they found no sign of Jake. Police have set up fences in the creek so they know what comes downstream, the chief said. Dogs indicated Jake may be in the creek, though Breacher said authorities do not take the suggestion as definitive. Authorities have found no information to suggest a crime was committed in Jake's disappearance, though police are not ruling out the possibility of an abduction. And that really raises another aspect of this case that I haven't touched on yet in this video that we have to consider, uh, especially... Um, talking about brain scratch, the last brain scratch episode, you know, that's a situation where two girls were riding their bikes and I think it's pretty clear that they were abducted by someone. Uh, is that the same situation that we have happening here? Uh, was Jake walking to the creek, possibly picked up before he got there or maybe even got to the creek and then possibly picked up from there? Uh, certainly something that we need to consider. And keep in mind, we have the police saying that they're looking for a person that was seen walking in the area, but they don't even have a good description of the person that they're looking for. Very, very tough situation. Daddy loves you. This is over at kwwl.com. And now we're going to hear from Jake's biological father. This is posted May 17th, 2018. Mike Wilson of Waterloo says he believes Jake might still be alive and that someone might have taken him. I just want to know if he's gone or if he's with the Lord 
Hopefully that ain't the case. Hopefully he's seeing this on someone's TV. Come home, Jake. Daddy misses you. KWWL asked why Wilson thinks someone took his son. Like I said, the leads, they haven't found anything. They found hardly any clothing, no clothing. Wilson says if someone abducted his son to please let him go, let him come home to his mom, stepdad, me. I mean, he has too many people that love him. Wilson says he's thankful to everyone who has helped the search for Jake. He also says he's been able to lean on another area dad during this tough time. Can you guys guess who I'm going to say? Yes. Once again, Drew Collins supporting everyone he can in this situation in a very amazing way. Um, just really tough to hear a father uh, speak from his heart in this way. But I do believe he's making a very good point about the search in the water. Um, you've got all the clothing on Jake. None of that has been found. Uh, I don't, I haven't heard that anything has actually been found that is related to Jake as a result of that search. Uh, and what has happened with that search, we will certainly learn right here back at the WCF Courier. Search of Wolf Creek complete. No sign of Jake Wilson. Investigators finished clearing Wolf Creek, the last place missing teenager Jake Wilson said he was headed, and haven't found any sign of him. Uh, once again, I just want to point out here is another photo of him without his glasses. So you really want to take a good look at that. Um, at this point forward, we will be using the leads that come in to expand into different search areas, Brecher said in Monday in a Monday afternoon release. We do not have any plans to recheck the waters at this time. Investigators had said all along Wolf Creek was their only reliable lead, uh, which in one way obviously is troubling, but in another way, as we saw with his father's comments, um, maybe Jake was taken by someone. Maybe that puts us in a situation where uh, he might still be out there. He might be alive and he might be waiting to come home. We have had cases. Uh, we've had cases of several months where people have been found. We've even had cases of a few years later where people have been found. It does indeed happen. And I don't think that this is a case where we should really be losing hope. Uh, over at radio, RadioIowa.com, search for missing Laporte City teen moves in a new direction. Uh, once again, it's just echoing the same thing I read on the last one that uh, Brecher is saying that they're looking into leads that are going to take them into different areas now, that they were basically very focused on that particular area. I don't, I want to just caution, I don't think that means that they were focused on that particular theory only. I'm pretty sure that they were working leads to other theories, but now, um, they're going to have to expand their search, obviously, because they searched that area um, so many times and so thoroughly, and they haven't found any sign of him there at all. At CBS2Iowa.com, we have some recent news, June 15th, 2018, that is showing this community isn't letting go, and they are still standing behind this family. LaPorte City residents continue to inspire hope for missing teens return home. In their annual festival of trails, the community honored Jake and his family with a float in the parade. Family and friends decked out in blue in support of his return, which is Jake's favorite color and the symbol for autism. The Sing Me to Heaven Foundation, which is a Laporte City group that assists grieving families with expenses after the loss of a child, also honored Jake in a lantern release. One of the lanterns, normally dedicated to families whose child had died, was dedicated to Jake, which they hoped will serve as a light that will carry Jake home. And this article also gives us a comment from Police Chief Chris Brecher. We've always looked into this as the possibility he was taken. It's still a possibility that he was taken. Outside of raising exposure for these cases, I also appreciate learning from them so that we can hopefully apply some of these lessons in our own lives to keep ourselves and our families safe. Here at kcrg.com, we have some information. Medical experts give advice for assisting missing children with autism. The medical expert we are talking about is Dr. Caroline Moniza at Mercy Medical Care in Cedar Rapids. And she tells us, 7 to 10 
is an age group that tends to wander away. But then there's also a big percentage of that group that will continue to wander as they get older. She says, just because a child wanders doesn't mean there is a lack of adult supervision. Usually, the child is looking for a calm spot where he or she won't be in sensory overload. They do tend to be drawn towards water, Dr. Moniz has said. The association says children with autism are known to walk several miles outside the established search area. Often these children will hide in small spaces. Um, that is a curious point of view to take with this case. What if, I mean, considering that his stepfather is saying that he had to give him directions. He had to give Jake directions for a two block walk. Is there a possibility that Jake got lost or that he continued walking in a direction he wasn't familiar with? Um, I certainly think that is something that we have to consider here. I know that in the information we've covered, the authorities were kind of reaching out to people within a five mile radius. But what we're learning from this story is it could be quite a bit more than five miles. Uh, and experts say if searchers come in contact with a child with autism, they will likely face communication barriers. I think it's more difficult with children with autism because they don't always have the communication abilities to be able to respond to their names being called or letting people know what they need. Um, really, really critical information in these types of cases. And... Another way that the world is being affected by this case, Cedar Falls woman promotes autism safety program. Uh, news that a LaPorte City teen with autism was missing hit hard for Courtney Rains, a parent of a child with autism. I was really in shock and I was feeling for his mom, Rains said. Recently, Rains learned of a program that provides bracelets with a GPS tracking device to children with autism and adults with dementia. Project Lifesaver is used in select towns across the world. The closest area using the program is Iowa City. Last week, Reigns submitted information to the Cedar Falls City Council and Public Safety Services to bring a similar program here. The bracelets have a GPS chip in them, giving officials access to a GPS location if someone is lost. Uh, this program is typically funded through a grant. Here we have a, pro, uh, a picture of the actual devices that are worn. Um, and from the rest of the article, basically, she's raising it to city council. They're trying to decide now what department would kind of lead the effort there and then uh, hopefully have them apply for a grant so they can pay uh, Project Lifesaver for this service in their area as well. Uh, Project Life Saver, Saver is a nonprofit organization. They do also accept donations. I'll have a link down below. And on behalf of my amazing patrons and PayPal supporters, we are also going to do a donation to this charity today. As soon as I'm done filming this, um, I'm going to pick the one that is going to give batteries and a band for a transmitter to help protect someone for an entire year. So thank you to all of my wonderful supporters out there that help me do things like this. I truly appreciate it. In the links down below, I will also include the Web Sleuths link to this thread. It's only currently 13 pages. You can definitely read through it all in a reasonable amount of time. And I will have a link to the FBI page where they're still trying to collect media. If you live in this area and you happen to have some media, uh, even if it's just a camera that faces out the front of your house that might be in an area that makes sense, please upload it or get in contact with them. I did notice here, and it's kind of unfortunate, that um, they're, they have a file size limit of only 512 megabytes, which for video files is, is nothing. So, uh, But they do have a way to get bigger files to them. You just have to call 1-800-CALL-FBI. But I'll have a link to this down below just in case you might have some information that can help help find Jake. Here's where I turn it over to you, Brain Scratchers. Let's talk about this in the comments below. As always, I ask that you please remain respectful. There's a very good chance one of the family members is going to bump into this thread. Anything is up to discuss, but obviously there is a respectful way to talk about these things, and I just ask that we all try to do that. In terms of theories, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be discussed further. The possibility that someone close to him is involved. Um, and if we're talking about that, it can't be someone that really lives outside the house because this seemed like kind of a 
a twitch decision. You know, uh, he went out for ice cream. He comes back. He decides he wants to go for a walk. He asks if he can go for a walk. Uh, not a whole lot of planning here. So I can't really imagine that it was a remote relative. Um, but I'm certain that, especially with the limited information we have on what went down that night and a couple of strange aspects to the story with his mother being in bed and, you know, letting him take a walk for the first time at that time of night. I know that we can't avoid talking about that. So I'm sure we'll be discussing that. Um, but outside of that, we do have the possibility that this could be an abduction. We also have the possibility that he might have strayed far, far out of the search area. Um, I'm really not sure what the feasibility of that is because there's a lot of uh, exposure that this case has gotten. I just really can't believe that he would have gotten anywhere else and people wouldn't put together that, oh, that's the missing kid. But uh, I'm not sure. Let's talk about it in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Searchlight. If you have friends that live in this area, let's please keep exposure raised. If you might have some information that could help in this case, please find it within yourself to use that contact information down below. Put it in the hands of the authorities so they can act on it. Um, that's really what this is all about. We're trying to bring a good conclusion to these stories that I share with you. And uh, sometimes a good conclusion isn't always a happy conclusion, but I think this family really needs to know where Jake is. Take care, everyone. I'll see you back here tomorrow on the Lord and Arts channel.